Hey, Bass Geek here, and I'm going to show you why the soft plastic swim bait is the most versatile bait you can use. So if you've been around my channel for, you know, any time at all, you'll know that I'm a big soft plastic swim bait fan. And, you know, I think it's time that I explain to you guys why I'm such a big soft plastic swim bait fan. Now, I, I like hard swim baits. Uh, I like anything that's going to catch big fish. But a soft swim bait, the thing I love about it is its versatility. And so I'm going to start by going over some of the things that make it so versatile. And then I'm going to show you how versatile it is when you're rigging it and for even, you know, watercolors. A lot of people think that swim baits are a clear water or clear-ish water bait only and that they can be, that they're really only, you know, should only be fished certain times of the year. But that's absolutely not true. One of the very first reasons I think soft plastic swim baits are so versatile is because of the sizes they come in. You know, a lot of people, when they think soft plastic swim baits, they think small baits like Kitex, like two and three inch, maybe four inch soft plastic baits. But that absolutely is not the case. You know, this is a seven inch Major League Lures uh, boom shad. I've got some eight inch Bastrix. Uh, you can find them as big as most of your hard-bodied swim baits. Number two, the colors. You know, you really can fish a soft plastic swim bait in any water clarity. Major League Lures, the Boom Shad, comes in some of the best color selections. I mean they have some of the best color selections of any swim bait anywhere hands down you know go out and look at their website which is just majorleaguelores.com and you'll see they have some colors that cover every type of water color and clarity you can imagine when we're talking about watercolor, of course, sometimes you're fishing in water that's so dirty, you really need some sort of vibration. Well, when I get to the rigging portion of this video, I'll show you some things you may have never thought of that'll give your swim bait some great vibration and drawing power. Depth level. The great thing about a soft plastic swim bait is you can fish it at any depth, any part of the water column. You can drag it on the bottom. You can fish it for suspended bass. You can even rig it so that it's actually a wake bait. So very close to a top water bait coming across the surface. So there's not a depth level that a soft plastic swim bait can't be fished at successfully. So the first way and the simplest way to rig a soft plastic swim bait is just on a swim bait jig style head. Now this is a ledge head, so it has the keeper, and what that keeper does really, other than just your standard jig head, it actually holds this bait together so you can fish it longer. So it just makes the bait a little more durable. If there's one bad thing about your soft plastic swim baits, Yes, of course, they're not going to be as durable as the hard baits are. But there are some baits in Major League Lures. Their swim baits, uh, as you'll see in next week's video, you know, I've, I've got one on an underspin that I catch several fish on in a row, and I can keep throwing. Uh, the, and then you, you pair it with the ledge head with that keeper, and it saves me a ton of money on these soft swim baits. My second favorite way to rig a soft plastic swim bait is on a underspin. Now this is the ledge head version of an underspin. It is the Tennessee River Bling and what I like about it is that you can bend the arm down. It's flexible. So you can put a, a big swim bait on here and you can adjust the height of the blade. 
Now this is, uh, you can see, I've caught a few fish on this. This is exactly what I was talking about. This is one of the boom shad by Major League Lures. And you can see, yeah, it's dinged up, it's tore up, it's missing an eye, but this thing will swim as true as it did when it come out of the pack. Here we have the same exact color in a 3 8 ounce micro head from Ledge Head uh, in the Tennessee River Bling. And this is a 3.3 inch boom shad, which I just caught a three and a half pound largemouth on just a few minutes ago before I started shooting this video. The third way that I'll rig a swim bait is a belly weighted hook. Now again, this is a boom shad, this is a crystal shad, and this is a, I believe it's an owner beast. This is a nine aught with a half ounce belly weight. I can fish this bait in clear water, especially in any area that you can fish a spinner bait. That's one of the things that I love about this setup. I can come through some of the absolute gnarliest wood that you're going to find better, in my opinion, because it's exposed. The hook actually goes into the back of the swim bait better than most spinner baits can. So I can really get in and bump the cover, you know, knock the wood with that sort of setup. Let's say you got some overcast, or you're fishing dirty water, or you're fishing grass. You need something with a little drawing vibration. Well, one of the things I'll do is actually put a chatterbait blade on the head of my swimbait jig. That takes a little work to do, depending on the style of uh, swimbait head you're using. But as you can see, I use a snap swivel, a split ring, and a chatterbait blade. And you talk about some erratic action and some vibration. This thing will call fish from a mile away in the weeds. And the other good thing is, believe it or not, just like a chatterbait, it comes through weeds very, very well, even with an exposed hook. Another way and a little more simple way to get some good vibration out of a swim bait, a little extra drawing power, is to put it on a scrounger head. That lip works back and forth as it comes through the water and really puts off a lot added vibration that the swim bait doesn't naturally give off. All right, first I want to pre-warn you about the traffic noise. I'm going to apologize for that right off the bat. I had some technical difficulties with uh, a couple of my video clips yesterday, so I'm reshooting it a day after I got off the water. Uh, one of the things that I almost forgot, one of uh, the other ways that I like to rig, uh, this is a ledge head slugger, three quarter ounce. And what I'll do for the ledge head, I'll put a link in this video to how to rig the actual ledge heads. I uh, shot a few videos for ledge head about a year ago that shows how to rig all this. But the slugger is basically an internal head so this thing i like to drag this on the bottom believe it or not very very slowly it looks like a shad eating on the bottom so here's something that i've really never heard or seen anyone else do uh, i'm sure somebody else has done it or came up with it i'm not saying i invented this but it's something i've not seen anyone else talk about and that's using a swim bait as a wake bait now, one of the things I do is I actually rig this up on a belly weighted hook, a very light belly weighted hook. You gotta have a little bit of kill weight to keep that bait running true. But once you do it, you slit the belly, which the Major League Lures already come with a slit belly. Now, the key to doing this is that you have to take the spring in at the bottom of the nose so that the nose wants to ride high. That's what gives you a wake. Now you'll have to use a little faster rod and reel. You know, I normally recommend anytime I'm using a swim bait that I'm going to use like a six, three to one. But in this case, I'm going to want to use something in the sevens or eights, just like a buzz bait. When you throw it out there, you're going to get it up on top of the water and you're going to hold your rod tip high and just slowly lower it as it gets closer to you. Much in the way of fishing a long eight. If you're from my area, you'll understand that. If not, it's pretty much the same way of fishing any style of wake bait. 
So share with us any ways that I may have missed. You know, there's so many different ways to rig a swim bait. You know, you can put it, actually put it on spinner baits. Um, you can actually put it on chatter baits. Uh, you know, this video would be uh, days long if we talked about every single way. So in the comments down below, share with us uh, maybe some ways that I haven't talked about or, you know, some ways that I don't know about and uh, some of your favorite ways to rig it that maybe no one else rigs it up. As always, questions and comments in the comment section below. Like it if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe, and you guys rock.